Joining us now, as of this morning, David Barnson, James Awad, Liz McDonald, and Ashley Webster. All right, down 800 points yesterday. Futures pointing up 100. Where do we do? What do we do tomorrow morning, 24 hours from now? You tell me what the president's going to tweet today, and I'll be able to give you a more informed answer. By the way, we were not down 800. We were down 799, so we don't need to exaggerate <laughs> what was already a pretty <laughs> oh, very painful funny. day. Very funny. Uh, listen, I think that obviously in a 24-hour period, a lot can happen, but here's what will not happen. In the next 24 hours, there won't be any substantive update on where we are with the China trade negotiations. There won't be any update from Chairman Powell around what the Federal Reserve is doing. So fundamentally, it's sentiment-driven right now, and I think that over the next 24 hours, investors kind of find where they want to put their positions. I expect the market will probably open about where it shows in the futures now, but there's a lot of uncertainty, and that uncertainty between 24,000 Dow and 26,000 Dow, that's not going anywhere. That's, to me, the little range we're in. That's the range we're in. And we're going to have volatility within it. Okay. Yeah. What do you make of this idea that maybe we will get a recession in the future, which took the market or helped it come down okay. yesterday? Listen, there's no maybe as to whether or not we're going to get a recession in the future. We're going to get a recession in the future. Right. They haven't gotten rid of sure. business cycles. But not in the immediate horizon. I, of course not. And, and GDP growth, I think, is very healthy. The jobs report is not a relevant metric to the uh, imminence of a potential recession. The far more important thing to me, and I've been saying this on your show forever, where are we with business investment? The Q3 numbers for non-residential fixed investment, so let's just call it business spending, hmm. were so down. It was shocking. Q1 were huge. Q2 were huge. Highest numbers we had seen since 2008. And all of a sudden it collapsed. I absolutely believe it's related to trade war fears. I think President Trump's tweet yesterday was unforgivably stupid. But do I think that business investment, industrial production, manufacturing, all those good metrics are still full steam ahead? I do. But we, the market needs confirmation of that. I think that's far more. We know the jobs number is going to be good. We know unemployment's low. We know wages are growing. Ironically, we could have sat here a couple months ago and people would have said a good jobs number would be bad for the market. Because right. it's going to make the Fed right. overly tighten and so forth. Correct. So that whole, like, we want it to be good but not too good, I, I'm good so news, tired of it. Yeah. We have a good economy, but the markets have to price in what they see in the future, Stuart. That's okay. All. I think it's a very important story. Even the Washington Post is coming down hard on Google because they propose a censured search engine for China. The headline in today's paper, Does Don't Be Evil Still Apply? Google, question mark. What do you say, David? Mm. Um, look, I think that the issue here is the hypocrisy of the Google organization. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, uh, the need for U.S. businesses oh. to do business with China <laughs> presents all sorts of economic and, of course, moral uh, challenges and complexities. And I'm not critical of Google for what they have to do necessarily to transact in China. I am critical of their unbelievable sanctimonious attitude towards commerce in the U.S. <laughs> where they can put it all on the side as it pertains to doing business with China.